Now, one of the biggest threats to the Taliban's new rule in Afghanistan is from another radical jihadist group, ISK. The regional chapter of the so-called Islamic State has battled the Taliban for dominance since 2015. The recent suicide attack on Kabul airport shows the group's intent to strike. And concerns are growing thousands of miles to the east about the events in Afghanistan. Kurdish forces in Syria fear the Taliban takeover could lead to a resurgence of the so-called Islamic State. Many families say they're already living under that threat. Since his father was murdered, Azo Ahmed Aziz has been too afraid to leave his home. Not far from here, two men on a motorcycle shot dead the local councilman. He had refused to cooperate with so-called Islamic State. Now Azo fears for the lives of his wife and children. I'm afraid my family will become the next target. They threatened us before my father was killed. Most of my relatives fought against IS in 2014. We were attacked by them many times. My younger brother was killed by IS two years ago. The Sha'il region is considered an IS stronghold in eastern Syria, one of many in the province. Kurdish fighters put an end to the Islamists' rule in 2019 with the help of the United States. But the self-styled soldiers of God went underground and continued spreading fear and terror, murdering anyone who dared to oppose them. Kurdish forces are fighting back. Here they're practicing raids on IS sleeper cells. The aim is to keep the terrorists in check as the number of IS attacks rises. There were 18 in this province in July alone, and the Taliban's victory in Afghanistan seems to have given them a boost. That's what this Kurdish commander thinks. Since the attack on Kabul airport, he's afraid a wave of terrorism could spread across Syria as well. The goal of the suicide bombing in Kabul was to attract new IS members so they can regroup with more force. We're convinced this is a renewed version of IS in new clothes, with new methods and new operations, and more dangerous than anything we've seen so far, not just in Afghanistan, but in other countries as well. Kurdish special forces are showing their presence on patrol. They don't want to give any ground to IS and they know its fighters come out of their hiding places at night, demand protection money, take hostages and commit murder. This is a checkpoint at an intersection between two villages considered IS strongholds. The guards are looking for suicide attackers and searching for weapons and explosives in cars, even if it might get them killed. They load up motorcycles with explosives, then they set them on fire. They plant bombs to kill us. Sometimes a group of them will attack us, firing at us and then disappearing. That has happened a lot. On raids like this, they try to capture IS leaders. Just a little while ago, they were able to take down a top IS commander. They destroyed 120 sleeper cells in July but more appear all the time. Azo Ahmed Aziz stays holed up in his house, hoping his family won't be targeted. The much feared return of IS to eastern Syria seems to be ever more likely. For more, I'm joined by Hans Jakob Schindler, Senior Director at the Counter Extremism Project here in Berlin. Welcome. Um, I would like to start off by talking about the report that we just saw. The Kurdish commander there is deeply concerned about the fact that the Taliban has now taken over in Afghanistan and what that kind of impact will have on Syria. What are your concerns? Well, he is not um, wrong in this one. I mean, obviously, the Taliban takeover was a massive propaganda win, not just for the Taliban, but also for al-Qaeda, and both are in a symbiotic relationship. So the competing global terror network, the Islamic State, has now something to prove. So we will have to expect more uh, Islamic State operations all over the globe, including, of course, in their core area in Syria and Iraq. I want to ask you about the psychological impact of the Taliban victory in Afghanistan for terror networks, not only in Afghanistan, not only in Syria, not only in the region, but around the world. Well, this was a massive boost to the global jihadist terrorist movement, 
whether it's of the Al-Qaeda or of the Islamic State persuasion. Because the Taliban achieved something that the Islamic State was not able to successfully do, to actually take over an entire country and are now the, the ruling regime. So Afghanistan will have a new draw for jihadist elements from around the globe, who now, obviously because of travel difficulties, will not travel in the same numbers than they did between 2014 and 16 to Syria and Iraq, but certainly in the way that they did in the early 90s, where we had this massive terror infrastructure in the country with the Al-Qaeda training camps. What about foreign fighters? We saw an influx of foreign fighters entering Afghanistan as the U.S. had already announced that it would be preparing to leave and as the Taliban victory moved ahead. Um, is there a concern that there could be more fi foreign fighters entering not only Afghanistan but the region? Oh, naturally. Afghanistan, as I said, has now developed into this propaganda hub where the Taliban allegedly not only defeated the United States but the entire international community opposing them. So obviously that these travels will continue and will increase once the terror infrastructure that everyone expects to reemerge reemerges. This is on the Al Qaeda side. The Islamic State, ISIS K side, of course, will always serve as a hub for disgruntled elements. Um, they were a purpose-built uh, affiliate, the only one of two purpose-built affiliates of the Islamic State, which sent people to Afghanistan in 2015 to actually build up a new structure rather than accepting the loyalty pledge of an already existing terror group. So it's very important for the Islamic State to have that affiliate. And that affiliate will now welcome any Taliban who are not agreeing with the power division or whatever system emerges in Afghanistan. They are already partially made up of ex-Taliban, so this is the natural harbor for them, plus Pakistanis, plus foreigners. So there will be a growth of ISIS-K, and there will be more attacks from ISIS-K in Afghanistan and beyond. Hans Jakob Schindler from the Counter-Extremism Project, thank you for your time.